Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I've come down a few canyons over from the ranch and as you can see, there's loads more trees over here. We're actually in the pinyon juniper forest. Uh, we've got a juniper here and a couple of pinyon pines right in front of us. It's these pinyon pines that I'm interested in today because they produce edible nuts and unfortunately, they are actually extinct at the ranch right now and I'd really love to bring them back. This particular species of tree is Pinus monophylia, or the single leaf pinion pine. Now it got that name because it has something that's really unusual for pine trees. You see, if you look at this, the needles do not come out in clusters. See that, where it contacts the branch? Normally pine trees have clusters of needles of uh, two, three, or five, but this particular species just has a single needle coming out. And I think it's the only example of that in the world. Given that these trees are from very arid parts of Utah, Nevada, and Arizona, I suspect that, that adaptation is somehow to conserve water. I'm not entirely sure though. So now if we look up at the cones, you can see they produce very large cones, and I think there's actually some nuts in that cone still, which I was not expecting to see, because usually the insane rodent posse would have got them by now. Let's see if I can get that cone down. Oh, yeah. So assuming I can get this in frame, here's the cone. Let's see if I can get some of those nuts out of there. I, it looks like they're empty. But look at the size of that seed. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it looks like you got some insect damage there. So assuming I'm unable to find any viable nuts, which is likely this time of year, I need to find another way to propagate these trees. I thought about going and uh, digging up some saplings, and actually I did try that. But after digging and digging, these roots go very deep. And so that's not really going to be practical. Uh, someone told me though, that I could take cuttings and propagate them that way. Basically take a clone of this tree. So I'm just going to reach under here. And uh, get a couple of branches. I'm gonna take it home, uh, split them off into individual pieces, stick them into some rooting hormone and then into some sand and see if I can get them to take root. I've never been able to root an evergreen, but yeah, it's worth a shot, right? So here's the bundle of branches that I cut. I tried to get some branches off of uh, different trees to increase the genetic diversity. So let's see how that goes. And as you can see, I've cut the top off of a bottle of water I'm going to stick this down in there so that hopefully they don't dry out as much on the way home. So, there you go. This little bouquet of tree. <laughs> this thing smells amazing. So we're back at the lab. I've got some polycarbonate uh, food trays here, which I got for another project and never ended up using. I think they'll be just perfect for this. The rooting medium that I'm going to have go inside there will consist of sand, sprig of moss, and uh, some mycorrhize root inoculant. So this is the fungus which is beneficial to the pine tree's roots. Helps get phosphorus to the tree. So I'm going to mix all these together. So now I have a well draining mixture of equal parts uh, moss and sand. So this plastic tray has a little insert here, which uh, provides an airspace at the bottom. And I'm going to take advantage of that to help add airflow to the roots. I'm going to just put a rag here to keep the sand from going down into the little holes. And I will insert a piece of airline down underneath of it. So now for the sandy moss mixture. I ended up drilling a hole in the side of the plastic so that the airline uh, can comb it in and make a good seal there. So this medium is a little bit too dry, so I'm going to mist it down. Might even pour some water in just to bring up the moisture level. I don't want it dripping, but I do want it pretty wet. With that wet, I'm going to draw some trenches where I'll be sticking the cuttings. So I've got my knife, a rag with some alcohol to sanitize it with. 
the rooting powder and just a glass of water to moisten the cuttings. So I'm looking for pieces that are about five inches long or shorter. Right there. At least I'll probably get better at cutting. And I'm going to pull off some of these needles. So I wind up with something like this. Yeah. I think they said to damage the stick a little bit. That's probably fine. Alright. So, put in water. I'm not sure if I need to soak it in water or not, but here we go. That's rooting powder on there. Stick it in the sand. There's our first tree. Now I get to do about a hundred more of those. Alright, the little cuttings are in their tray. I'm just gonna water them in a little bit. And now to add the lid. That should all be set up now. I'm also going to be trying to root some other trees. Uh, this is an Austrian pine, which seemed to grow pretty well at the ranch, though it's not native, as well as some of these uh, juniper. I've got some uh, juvenile juniper branches, uh, some kind of transitioning, and even a few uh, adult branches there. And we'll see uh, which one roots the best. So right away I can tell you that these juvenile juniper branches are uh, kind of hard to work with. First of all, they're very prickly. Uh, even with the gloves on, sometimes I get a nasty jab with it. And second, you've got all these little spines across its, uh, you know, the branch here. And uh, when I try to scrape those off, sometimes they come off, sometimes it just takes the bark with it. So, you see right there, I just girdled it. So I'm not sure if that'll be viable anymore. Let's trim it down a little bit. There we go. Don't get in the water. See, I still got some spines on there, but I guess it's not going to be that much of a problem. I'm just also they're not as stiff, so I can't just shove them into the sand. I have to make a hole first. Oh, there you go. All right, all of the cuttings are now in their boxes. Uh, the boxes, of course, are to hold in the moisture and keep the humidity up so that the twigs don't dry out. If they dry out, they'll die. If we take a peek in here, you can see there's the pinion pine cuttings. I think I had about 62 of them in there. And this box right here has got a little bit uh, more of a variety of plants. Uh, they're all evergreen. And let me run you guys through what I've got. So here is the Austrian pine cuttings. Here's the pinion pine. I threw in some of those just so I have them in more than one location because I really want those to root. Next to those is the Utah Juniper. Uh, these right here which are a little bit more bluish and very prickly are uh, from a tree that's just a few years old. And then these here which are a little bit greener but uh, you know still prickly are from a tree that's about uh, maybe five to ten years old. And then these over here are the same species. You can actually see one of the berries. This is from a tree that's at least 150 years old. You can see how the, the branches change. And I, I kind of want to see whether I can get all of them to root or if just the juvenile ones will root or what. And then down here I've got some emerald green arborvitae. Uh, apparently these are normally propagated this way, so I figured that would be a little bit easier maybe. And if anything's going to root, those are. Next to those are some of the two-leaf pinion pine from Colorado. And then between those and the old juniper are some Rocky Mountain juniper cuttings. And then over here on the far end I've got some Douglas fir, Engelmann spruce, and blue spruce. So just trying a variety to see what I can get to root. So let's uh, cover these back up so they don't dry out. Now let's go set this up inside the closet. And here's the closet set up. You can see I've put the boxes up on top of a high shelf and I've situated two 40 watt lights just a few inches away to give them plenty of light. You can see the air lines coming through over to here where I've got the air pump. And if you follow my mess of wiring down, you can see that it goes down to a power strip with a couple of timers. 
Here's the timer that is running the air pump. As you can see, I've got it set to just come on a few times a day. I don't want it to run continuously, otherwise it'll just dry out the plants. And then this other timer is running the lights, and it's going to come on for about 12 hours a day. And I might change that if I need to. Seems a bee has made her way into here. Come on, girl. So unfortunately that's all I've got for now. It's going to take at least half a year for these to take root, assuming it doesn't just turn into a big block of mold. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the video here and then we'll come back in a few months, maybe next spring, and give an update. I know I don't like when YouTubers do this either, but you're going to wait the same amount of time and I could really use you guys' feedback on this system. You know, if there's something I've done horribly wrong, I'd like to know about it now rather than six months from now. So, actually come to think of it, I've been doing a lot of projects that have a year wait. But anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next spring.